Crohn's disease is one of the two most common inflammatory bowel diseases. The other one is ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis both cause inflammation in the intestines and have very similar symptoms and diagnostic approaches. Together, these two diseases affect about one million Americans at any one time. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are two different forms of IBD. There are some important differences between them. Crohn's disease can affect any part of the gastrointestinal system from the mouth to the anus, whereas ulcerative colitis only affects the colon. In Crohn's disease, the inflammation involves the full thickness of the bowels, whereas in ulcerative colitis, only the inside layer of the bowels is usually affected. Both predispose to cancer, but ulcerative colitis to a greater extent. This patient education lesson will help you understand Crohn's disease and how it can be treated. Anatomy: Swallowed food goes through the esophagus, which is the feeding tube. Next, food passes through the stomach, where it is partially digested. Digested food goes from the stomach to the small intestines, where most nutrients are further digested and absorbed into the body. Fibers and digested food finally reach the colon. In the colon, the rest of the nutrients get absorbed and stools are formed. Stools are stored in the last part of the colon, the sigmoid colon and rectum, before being excreted. The colon has several sections. The ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, the rectum, and the anus. The walls of the intestines have three layers. The inside layer is called mucosa. It is responsible for digesting and absorbing food. The middle layer is muscle that helps push food through the intestines. The outer layer of the intestines is called serosa. The serosa is very smooth, so the intestines do not get stuck together in the abdominal cavity. Crohn's disease. Inflammation caused by Crohn's disease can affect the whole gastrointestinal tract, whereas ulcerative colitis only affects the colon. Crohn's disease can cause any part of the gastrointestinal tract, from the mouth to the anus, to become inflamed. It usually only affects the colon and the last part of the small intestine, called the ileum. Inflammation caused by Crohn's disease can involve all three layers of the intestines and causes intestinal swelling, intestinal scarring, obstruction of the intestines. Crohn's disease can also cause sores that tunnel through the affected area into surrounding tissues, such as the bladder, vagina, or skin. These tunnels, called fistulae, often become infected. Usually, fistulae are treated with medicine, but in some cases, surgery is required. The areas around the anus and rectum are often involved. Crohn's disease usually causes nutritional problems such as a lack of protein, calories, or vitamins. There are three main reasons that patients with Crohn's disease have nutritional problems or deficiencies. One, the patient may not eat enough of certain kinds of foods. Two, diarrhea causes a loss of protein. Three, the patient's body may not absorb nutrients very well. Other problems associated with Crohn's disease include arthritis, skin problems such as rashes or sores, inflammation in the eyes or mouth, kidney stones, gall stones, liver diseases. Causes and symptoms. There are no known causes of Crohn's disease. Scientists believe that the immune system of the body responds to a virus or bacteria, causing the intestinal walls to become inflamed. The immune system is made of blood cells and chemicals that find bacteria and viruses and destroy them. When the immune system tries to fight bacteria in the intestines, the intestines can become inflamed, swollen, destroyed, or scarred. 
Crohn's disease may be hereditary. Around 20% of Crohn's disease patients have a blood relative with an inflammatory bowel disease. Men and women are affected equally. Crohn's disease affects small children, too. The most common symptoms of Crohn's disease are pain in the lower right abdomen and diarrhea. Patients with Crohn's disease may also suffer from rectal bleeding, weight loss, and fever. If bleeding is serious and persistent, it can lead to anemia, which is an abnormally low number of red blood cells. Children with Crohn's disease may have impaired growth and development. A fistulae is an abnormal connection between two organs or between an organ and the outside. For example, a fistulae can be a connection between the colon and the bladder, or the bladder and the vagina, or the colon and the outside. If fistulae develop, gas and stools may seep from them. If a fistulae is between the intestines and the skin, the patient may experience gas or stool leaking from the pores in the skin. In women, fistulae may develop connecting the intestines to the vagina. In this case, gas or stools may seep from the vagina. For men and women with fistulae connecting the intestines to the bladder, gas or liquid stools may come out the urethra during urination. Crohn's disease can cause intestinal infections, causing bacteria and pus pockets to grow in the abdomen. Intestinal infections may result in severe pain, fever, and even death if not treated. In some cases, Crohn's disease results in blockage of the intestines. This blockage can lead to death if not attended to urgently. The most common signs of such a blockage are abdominal pain, distension, nausea, and vomiting. Crohn's disease increases the risk of developing colon cancer. For that reason, it is important to have regular medical checkups. If found early, colon cancer can be cured.